not to use the faith of God to make it work. See, so you've got your own resurrection inside of you. Your resurrection lays inside of you in your spirit. I know when Jesus died on the cross, his soul descended into hell and preached to the souls that were in prison, that repented not the long suffering days of Noah. His body went into the grave. But before he died, he committed his spirit into the hands of God, into the hands, into the lion's command my spirit. So you see, his spirit went to God, his soul went to hell, his body went to the grave. Now, that spirit that was in him was the spirit of God. That spirit in sundry times and divers manners anointed the prophets to bring the message to the people. In the last days through Christ, and uh, now in these days here through the gospel. Now, when we receive Christ into our heart, there's all that we have need of. There's eternal life. Now, Christ could not come back until three days was fulfilled because his spirit was behind a screen like a bar like this that he could not cross over that bar and because it was the spoken word of God that he was to lay in the grave for three days and three nights. Now he could not come back until that three days and nights was up. Then when the three days and nights was up, his spirit was loosed. It went directly to his soul and his soul came back and picked up the body and fulfilled what he said. I have power to lay my life down. I have power to take it up. Amen. I have power. Now, each one of you have power the same way because you are sons and daughters of God. And the very Spirit that's in you this morning, the Holy Spirit that's in you this morning, that same Holy Spirit will raise you up. So Amen. you have power to raise yourself back up. When you die, your soul will go into the uh, under the altar of God, not in, right in the presence of God. Now your Spirit will go to God, but you cannot come back. Remember the Bible where it said the spirit, the souls are on the altar crying, Lord, how long, how long? And they could not return until the scripture is fulfilled. Like Christ could not return until the scripture is fulfilled. Then after the, all has been done, all the suffering's over, and the brethren has suffered the same things, or we've suffered like they suffered, and so forth. Then on that day, you will know exactly where you're buried. Your spirit will be turned loose from God. And will come to the soul. Now the soul is that part of me who knows and understands your intelligence. You remember the vision I had not long ago, or the little translation went into that place and saw those people? Amen. Now your spirit will come back to that body and that that kind of a body, the soul, which is the body that does not uh, have to eat and so forth. If this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved. We have one already waiting. A celestial body. And with that spirit and that soul and celestial body, you'll raise up again this natural body for that great millennium. Uh, you, you have the power in you now to do that. Now, but that power that you have in you now could make a new world. God doesn't have little weak spots and big heavy spots that's powerful. The least little touch of God is omnipotent. Amen. See? The least little touch of God. So you know, so I'm trying to get you in the faith now. You know that something has happened to you as a Christian. Do you know it? Amen. Amen. You used to ride down here in the muck with all of the muck and sin and drinking and gambling and, and things of the world. Well, as soon as you believe that Christ forgave your sins, you raise up above that stuff. Amen. Amen. Now you're riding up here. The above all of it. Why? Because that you believe that you are a Christian. Then when you accepted Christ and the Holy Spirit came to you, then you had faith in the Holy Spirit that gives you power to ride above that kind of a life of sin. Well, the only thing you have to do to ride higher into healing is just have more faith. Amen. Just keep pushing it out. And there you are. Now you're sick and you're not a Christian. Become a Christian right now so that that healing power will come in you by becoming a Christian. Amen. And that will give you faith to ride above sin. It will give you faith in everything that you have need of in this journey is right in you now. Uh, and the only thing you have to do is have faith in God that pushes that good things out of you with you by the Holy Spirit. Do you understand clearly now? Amen. You got to uh, Billy told me last night, called me and said, come
come in this morning, especially for one person, come thinking we're having services this week of those seven uh, seals. And they brought a sick child, I believe. And if you're here now, sir, remember, you cannot, your, your faith will have to go for that child if it's, if it's a little infant child. But now, let me take another scripture, if it's all right. Just, all right. Me, just remember, now in the Gospels, we read over in the 16th chapter, I believe, of the Acts, or that Paul and Silas was in prison. One night. And they'd been beaten because they cast the devil's spirit out of a fortune telling girl. And it was, uh, and she, her masters, had uh, got angry about it and beaten them, put them in inner prisons. And then when they did that, well, Paul and Silas was praying and God sent an earthquake and shut the jail down. The Philippian jailer being a centurion which to lose his, his, uh, prisoners was to be his own life but have to pay for the prisoners. He pulled his sword and was going to commit suicide when Paul ran forth and said, Do yourself no harm. We're all here. And this centurion had saved some impression they had had about Paul and them. They might have sung hymns. They might have testified or done something. But whatever it was, they know that they were a holy man. They know there was something different about those men because quickly he asked, What must I do to be saved? Amen. What must I do to be saved? Now Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And thy and thy house shall be saved. Amen. Well now, if believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't mean that his salvation would save the house, but if he's got that faith in God for his own salvation, he has the same faith for his house. And his house will have to come in. Yeah. The same thing. Same as Job did, as I said the other night down in Georgia at a meeting. I said, Joel, he said, now, I don't know if my children have seen it, but what if they have seen it? And Joel had one thing to do to be righteous, that was offer a burnt offering. He said he would offer the burnt offering if his children had sinned, then they would be forgiven of their sin. And it was a good thing that father does. That's a good thing he fathered. We need more of those kind of fathers today. And Joel offered the burnt offering. That's before his tragedy set in. But when his children was all killed, and his sheep all destroyed, and all he had taken, he's sitting on the hay sheep in back of his house, scraping himself with a piece of crop. Did you notice, after the days of his tragedy, when God began to restore to him again, where he had 10,000 cattle or so forth, he restored double his, double his sheep and double his yeah. But did you notice, and God also gave Job his seven children. Did you ever think where they were at? That burnt offering stood for them. Amen. They were saved in glory waiting for him to come. He's with them today. Uh, Thine and thy house shall be saved. Now Job had one thing to do to be righteous was to offer the burnt offering. You have one thing to do to be righteous that has faith in God. Amen. For by faith are you saved. By faith are you saved. By faith you get everything that you have. Yeah. It's by faith that you believe it. Now, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thy and thy house shall be saved. Now, sir, if you've got the baby here to be prayed for, you believe yourself. I'm here to put my faith with yours. And we'll believe together that God will heal that baby. You see, we got in us the power to do that. Amen. You've got in you the power to do it. Every Christian's got the power to do it. But now, if we could just get that power is controlled by law, as I've often said. It's like... A gravitation controls water because it's a law. Gravitation controls water. The sun is controlled by the by the uh, uh, the earth, the turn of the earth. Uh, you can't just make the sun do one thing and then say, "Ah, oh, they won't sleep no longer." Let hold up, hour. It won't do it. See, because there's a law. If you work according to that law, well, then everything will be all right. If you go to bed at night, you can wake up at night. And if you uh, like, we got the. Lake Superior, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, and all those great lakes up here. We got tens of thousands, tens of thousands of acres of ground out in Nevada and California and Arizona and New Mexico that's burning up for that water. A land that would raise anything. You could feed the whole world out there. If you only had this water up here down there. And it wouldn't bother that because it's a spring bed. As soon as it goes down, it just comes up to this level again because gravitation holds it there. Well, now, if you can work a 
became flesh and dwelt among us. Now we believe that, Lord, with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all that's inside of us, we believe it. And I've tried in a simple, childlike way to present it to the people that they might understand and know that the power of God lays within them. They can only have their faith and follow God's heart. That's how they were saved. They come and repented of their sins and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible of Acts 2, and then Peter said that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And here it comes. Just to tell you, because it's God's Word they manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Well, now the same thing, Father, we know is true when we are not the sick with our and pray over the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Yeah. God shall raise them up. Thank God may each one leave this all around this place this morning so happy rejoicing and knowing that God is healed. Amen. Lord, we may well. For we commit them to thee now. In the name of Jesus Christ, may each one be healed and kept the vision. What it means, like Abraham, call those Amen. things which are not as though they were. Amen. No matter what the result is, that has nothing to do with faith. Hallelujah. The result is nothing. Faith's already come to hold. And faith is the substance of things. Amen. Oh, and the yes. evidence of things not seen. Well, God, make God. it sink deep in their heart. For their need. I go as your humble servant to stand here along with other servants and pray God to put in our hearts for these sick people. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody said Brother Ethel Beaver was in the building. Now, I think there's another minister here at the head of prayer this morning. We would like to ask all the ministers here what they we are. You can come up here and stand around this altar with us. Yes, won't you? Please, Brother. And, uh, uh, minister, Brother Ben, thank you. Come out and stand around here at the round of all of you so we can have prayer with these people laying hands on them. Now, as they play the song and the ministers are taking their place here, so we each one to lay hands on them. Let's see coming down across the mountain. I see a man coming. What any different from any other man? He's just an ordinary man. Kind of small in body, rather frail. As we see him look his eyes down upon a, a scene taking place down in the valley. It was in the apostles. They had a boy down there that had epilepsy. And no doubt for what they were saying, healing, Lord, healing. But you see, just saying healing, Lord, healing won't do it. That just won't do it. There's got to be something behind that healing, Lord, healing. And if I can get you to believe that, and believe that with all your heart, you're going to be healed. If I can get you to really see the vision, I look at those disciples down there, maybe shaking, maybe pushing, harder. Believe it, brother, believe it. Hallelujah, believe it. Healing, Lord, healing. But the devil stayed right there because he couldn't find a faith there to make him believe. But here comes one down across the hill. And as soon as that devil recognized that that was a little different than that other man. Now that's the kind of man we want to be able to do. Just not come for a show, but come in love. Then we walked up to Father. I think this is where the song was written from, composed of the word. He said, Lord, have mercy upon my son, for the spirits and the of the devil, so that it throws him in the fire and pines away and so forth. He said, I brought you to your disciples to leave him to eat. But I, I, I brought you, he said, I can. If you will believe. Now I have the power within me, he says, to do it. If you can believe that. Would God let these cancer ridden people sit here this morning and been ridden, bed with cancer and leukemia and sickness and affliction? Would God yield them and fetch you by? Not like that. See? Uh, he doesn't fail. I can.
God, I 